Linfield scored after 19 minutes. Billy Murray from the right put over a well-placed cross, and though Davy Hanna couldn't make a proper contact, Robbie Barr was there to finish it off. Ballymena equalised in the 69th minute, Jonathan Speak cut it across, and Ronnie Burns' tremendous right foot shot gave George Dunlop no chance. Six minutes from time, Linfield were awarded a free kick when Martin McGacky was judged to have been brought down just outside the penalty area. The Ballymena player certainly didn't agree with referee Fred McKnight's decision. But there was no disputing the accuracy of Robbie Barr's free kick, which gave the Blues victory and a place in the final. The final at the Oval, where Coleraine beat Linfield by one goal to nil to win the first trophy of the season. In truth, it wasn't a very good final, but a late winner gave Coleraine a victory they deserved. While defeat for Linfield only deepens the gloom that settled around Windsor Park these days, the Blues have now lost five of their last six games. The first chance fell to Coleraine. John Sloan's chip through was knocked on by Sam McQuiston. It fell to Raymond McCoy. He steadied himself, but sliced the shot well off target. It was a night when Linfield were finding openings hard to come by. Closest they came to scoring was from a free kick. The ball was only partially cleared. Trevor Anderson flicked it back in, but Georgia Boyle's header flew wide. International midfielder Felix Healy started one of Coleraine's best moves. A superb through ball put Ricky Wade in, but the shot was well touched away by George Dunlop. A few minutes later, the international goalkeeper had to be on his toes again when Healy burst through, but once again Dunlop made the save. Just before half-time, Linfield skipper David Jeffrey did get the ball in the Coleraine net, but it was ruled out for offside. The second half started quietly, but burst to life when Coleraine had a great chance to break the deadlock. Healy played a 1-2 with McQuiston, but as Dunlop quickly narrowed the angle, Healy fired a shot well wide. But six minutes from the end, Healy's corner provided the winner. Substitute Michael O'Neill helped it on its way, and Ricky Wade's header did the rest. So 1-0 to Coleraine and celebrations as the Ulster Cup was on its way back to the showgrounds. Well, I think we must give Coleraine credit. At the end of the day, they got the goal, which mattered, and all congratulations must, must go to them. Uh, we fought very hard, uh, but I think we could have been playing until midnight and we possibly still wouldn't have scored. Uh, we we're obviously very, very disappointed. We worked and tried as hard as we can. And unfortunately, things just didn't go right for us. To make it nine titles in ten years. 39 in all, and Roy Coyle's 26th trophy since he took over a dozen years ago. And aptly, half a dozen goals secured half a dozen titles. Here's the rule of honour. In the 14th minute, a Gary McCulloch volley gave Linfield the lead. Giorgio Boyle's hat-trick began four minutes later, poaching inside the six-yard box after Graham had saved Doherty's shot. And then came a candidate for the softest goal of the season, George O'Boyle again. Nice turn, shame about the shot, and oh dear. Linfield's fourth was a good goal, indeed skipper David Jeffrey won't score any better. 4-0 at half time. O'Boyle showed why he's cross-channel material when he completed his hat-trick a touch of class, as they say. And this is number six. McGacky did the trick. A comfortable win. The championship then for an infield side that had been written off. Or but going back to Saturday in the top tie was, of course, the Korean Linfield clash. Linfield led 1 0 at half time before a couple of blunders in the second half let Korean through. Looking back at the highlights of that game, here's Jackie Fullerton. A crowd approaching 10,000, Coleraine's biggest for many years, was there to see what turned out to be an all-action cup tie. The first chance fell to Linfield. George O'Boyle laid on the chance, Martin McGacky hit the shot, but Jim Platt made the save. The Linfield goal came in the 31st minute. Sid Burrow's corner was pammed away by Platt, Roy McCready didn't clear it, and Gary McCulloch buried the volley in the top corner. Then came a Coleraine chance. Felix Healy crossed from the left. Ricky Wade got the touch, but Barry McCready just couldn't connect with the header. In 57 minutes, it was one each. David Jeffrey robbed by Barry McCready. Raymond McCoy flicked it on, leaving Ricky Wade with all the time and space he needed. 
Four minutes later, another tragedy for Linfield and goalkeeper George Dunlop. He caught the back pass, but lost his footing and the ball, and the rest was easy for McCoy. 13 minutes from the end, Coleraine got their third. Substitute Sam McQuiston outpaced David Jeffrey on the left, and when Paul Mooney's attempted clearance struck Dunlop, McCoy was in hand to snap up the chance, leaving a final scoreline, Coleraine 3, Linfield 1. The first Belfast Big Two meeting in a final for two years. And like the last time, the Glens beat the Blues. And they opened the scoring. Enjoy the highlights and the comments of Glentoran manager Tommy Jackson talking to Harry Thompson. All the individuals are told that uh, they're picked to play in a team. And if they don't produce the goals, we have all the guys who are going to play in their places. So uh, we did it at Bangor. We played two days before the semi-final and we asked for commitment, we got it, we went 5-0 and um, we asked them to do it against uh, Lorne and we went 2-0 and we asked today again but uh, we got it today, we got the effort and basically that's what the game's about 2-1 at that stage then early in the second half but the Glens produced some glorious moments after that that should have sealed the game Cleary's creative ability was brilliant here, the finish wasn't Linfield equalised in the 73rd minute and it was just like the first, another McGackie header, his 26th goal of the season, but there was more excitement to come. Like this superb Patterson save. And the winning goal scored by Robert Craig in the 89th minute. Now you won the Gold Cup last year with Crusaders, you've won it this year. If you win it for a third year in the trap, you get the keep? Uh, I don't think I would have room for it. <laughs> With all the fishing trophies I have at home. 